Okay. So what we have done uh, in the last session is, is some result about continuous functions. It is called uh, intermediate value theorem. What does it say? Suppose I take two points on the domain of a function f and I know it is continuous. At this point, f of a is negative. At this point, we have the, the value of f at that point is positive. Then it says there is some point c between a and b at which f of a f takes value 0. This is about the individual value theorem. Yeah, so, that will be stopped the last session. Now, see, recall what you have said is in the, in the before talking about continuous functions. Given any function f, we gave a map from sequences in u to sequence in r. Then, then we said this, this set has some special uh, classes say convergent sequences, Cauchy sequences, monoton sequences and bounded sequences. Then we said we are inter interested in functions that preserve those, those, those sequences. In the sense, uh, f is nice with, with respect to bounded sequences, if f, f star f hash maps every bounded sequence in here to bounded, bounded sequence here. Similarly, monoton sequences map to monoton sequences. Convergent sequences with some extra condition, extra, the, the limit should be in that uh, in u, convergent sequence in u whose limit is inside u to the convergent sequence with, with some extra description f of a should be the limit and also about Cauchy sequences. But we discussed only one, one class of sequences that, that assigns f of x n goes to f of a whenever x n goes to a. Only, only this we have discussed, the, the notion of continuity. So there are three things uh, remaining for us to discuss. One is a function that maps bounded sequences to bounded sequences. Next thing, a function that maps uh, Cauchy sequences to Cauchy sequence. A function that maps monoton sequences to monoton sequences. So three things are uh, we need. Uh, three things are uh, remaining to discuss. Let us do one by one. Let us uh, think about functions that preserve bounded sequences. F from U to R. Is said to preserve bounded sequences if for every sequence xn in u, and we know that this is bounded, f of xn should be bounded. This is the condition. Now, what? Now, an, an obvious question is the following. See, we already have some nice notion of uh, function that is continuous function, and this is a new notion of a function. One obvious question is the following. Is a continuous function satisfy this property? If I take a continuous function, does it always map bounded sequences to bounded sequences? Because we have two two uh, class of functions. One obvious thing would, uh, that we want to do is uh, to check how they are related. Are they same? Are they different? Uh, do do uh, at what time they are same? At what time they are not same? Like the dull, small small thing we need to check. So we'll check that first. So if I have a continuous function f. Uh, it is continuous. Does it send a bounded sequence in U to a bounded sequence in R? Xn is a bounded sequence. We are thinking about the boundedness of Fxn. Is it bounded? Unbounded? Whatever it is. Whatever it is. Uh, now, to talk about continuity, we need to have a sequence that is fine. Uh, that converges, right? That is the first condition. Xn should converge. Second thing is the converging point Xn converges to A. That element A should be an element of U. Only then I can I can apply the the continuity uh, description for this sequence. But all we have here is that Xn is a bounded sequence. Not every bounded sequence is convergent sequence that we have already seen. We have some examples of bounded sequences that are not convergent, but but uh, one thing that we should feel happy about is given a bounded sequence, given a bounded sequence, Boltzmann-Weierstrass theorem says there is a subsequence that is convergent. Right? This this may not be convergent, but there is a subsequence that is convergent. 
So let me write down that subsequence, uh, let me denote that by yn. Uh, yn is the subsequence of xn that is convergent. So, so first point is fine. Second thing is, so we, we need to remove this also. Now this is not xn, this is yn. Y n is a sequence in uh, it, it is a sequence in U. X n is a sequence in U. Y n is a bonded subsequence. Y n is a subsequence of X n. So Y n is also a sequence in U. Now we know Y n is convergent. That is because of the Boltzmann Meissner theorem. Y n is convergent. So there is some element A in R such that Y n converges to A. Now what is the second condition about uh, to to apply continuity? We need this limit to be inside U. But Boltzmann and Mestras says uh, there is a it is a, it's a convergent sequence, but it does not say whether A belongs to U or not, that we do not know. So, we, if we have to apply, maybe we should put some extra condition on U such that if a sequence in U converges, the limit should be inside U. If I put that condition, see we, we got, we got uh, stuck here. We got a sequence that converges, but the limit it is not very clear whether it is in U or not. So, we cannot apply the continuity of F. So, to apply, we need to make we need to go back to the starting point. Uh, U is the starting point. So, there we put some condition so that whatever sequence in U that converges, the element should be inside uh, U. So, one can then one can apply the continuity uh, idea. So, this is this is extra thing that we are asking now. That was in, uh, in, in the starting point that uh, U is an R, any arbitrary subset of uh, R, we put some extra condition now. What is it? For any sequence in U, if it is convergent, the limit point should be inside U. See, every time I cannot say this much, this much uh, sentence. So, we, we, uh, because we, we, will, we will use this uh, idea again and again, we will give some name for that. A subset of R is nice if for every sequence in U that converges, the limit should be in U. That niceness has a name, it is called a subset U of R set to be closed subset of R if for any sequence in U, if I know it is convergent, the limit point, whatever the whatever we write here, X is convergent, we write something here, right? That is that is the limit point. This limit point should be an element of U. So because it is necessary for us, we put some extra <laughs> we put some condition here. Otherwise, we, we cannot proceed uh, from here. We don't even know how to go forward. If if I don't know A is uh, element of U, I cannot apply F. I don't know what is what to do. So I get stuck here. So one thing to do when you get stuck uh, at some places, go back and see if I put some small changes in the beginning. You might be able to pass this obstacle. The, the, that, that is the only thing. You might not be able to reach what you want, but at least this is gone, this obstacle is gone, uh, feel happy about it. Now what is the situation? We have a continuous function such that the domain is closed. Domain is a closed subset of R. Now, now, now I can apply the continuity of F. Y n converges to A, F n is a continuous function, so F of Y n converge to f of n. Nice. So, f n uh, is seen to be a, a convergent sequence. We are thinking about boundedness of f of x n. We know that f of y n is a convergent sequence. Every convergent sequence is a, is bounded. In particular, f x, f n, f y n is a bounded sequence. But the, the problem is, f y n is a subsequence of x n, but the boundedness of f y n does not say anything about boundedness of f x n. We can have a sequence that is unbounded, but there is a subsequence which is bounded. This is this should not be any surprising for you. Uh, let me do some example. So, so what we are looking at is we are looking at a sequence that is unbounded. Uh, but there is there is a subsequence b 
that is bounded. And this is what this is what we are looking at. <laughs> One thing to do is the following: we have a bounded sequence. You take any bounded sequence. You can take any bounded sequence. Take other uh, unbounded sequence. Combine these two, B and C, to form a new sequence. You can call it as theta. Theta is a sequence into R. How is it defined? For n, it is defined as uh, a, uh, not an, bn. bn for n belongs to 2, 4, 6, 8. So, it is defined as cn for n belongs to 1, 3, 5, 7, so on. So, we, we, we put b and c alternatively. Now, this is this is a new sequence for which this is a subsequence, this is also a subsequence. Do, do you know that? Check yourself. We have already done this before, but if you have forgot ab about that, you can you can do one more time. If you construct a sequence theta from uh, b and c in this way, then b and c are actually subsequence of this sequence. Now, what this sequence has a subsequence that is bounded. See, observe that C is unbounded. So, C of n uh, subset of R, this is unbounded. Because C is a subsequence of theta, one of the conditions is C of n should be contained in theta of n. If C n is unbounded, there is no way theta n is going to be bounded. So, so what do we have here? We have a sequence that is unbounded, but there is a subsequence of that which is bounded. So, let us go come back to the previous situation. We have a sequence and uh, we have a sequence f x n and we have a subsequence of that. We know this is bounded that does not say anything about uh, this f x n. So, again, again we are stuck, we do not know how to proceed from here. So, we will just note it down what we have done. Uh, we might have to come back to that whenever we have, whenever we think we have enough uh, uh, enough machinery to to attack that situation, we will come back to that. So what we have is f is uh, from u to r. Uh, it should be closed. I mean, if it is closed, we, we may be able to proceed further. That that was that is uh, that was a necessity. This we added by uh, the necessity. Then we are trying to check if x n bounded implies f x n bounded. This is what we are trying to see, but, but we got stuck at, at some stage. We got a subsequence of f x n that is bounded, but that does not really say anything about uh, uh, anything about this. Now, now uh, even, even after using continuity of, of this function and uh, u being closed, we were not able to uh, reach at this stage. I mean, it may be true, may not be true, but we do not know how to do. That is, that is all I am saying. Now, see, if all we are looking for is a function satisfying this property, one, one unfair way to reach that stage is by asking that uh, a function with the property that f of u itself is bounded. Th this is one very unfair way, but, uh, but yeah, <laughs> if you ask this condition, this, this follows. For every, see, f of x n, for any sequence, is subset of f of u. If f of u is bounded, this will also be bounded, irrespective of what x n is, it is bounded, unbounded, whatever it is f of x n will be bounded. So, the, so <laughs> this is one way to achieve uh, functions that preserve bounded sequences. And uh, the, the, uh, this kind of functions are called bounded functions. A function f from u to r is said to be a bounded function if 
the image is a bounded subset of R. Then we have seen just now that uh, with respect to what, what x n I choose here, what uh, sequence I choose here, the image is subset of f of u. So, it is always bounded. So, in particular this function takes bounded sequences to bounded sequences. So, we, we got what we, we got what we want, but uh, this is not very fair. I mean, it, it is a very, very, uh, very unfair, <laughs> uh, yeah, it is very unfair to ask. So, we, we have now, uh, we had a notion of continuous functions. Now, we have one more notion. What is it? Bounded function. Again, as I said just now, <laughs> sometime back, when we have two notions of functions, one obvious thing to ask is whether one implies the other or how they are related. So, now the question is the following. Suppose I take a function from u to r that is a continuous, do I know that it is bounded? That is what it is. Or suppose I take a bounded function, do I know it is continuous? These are the two questions that you need to ask. Now, you might have already not you might have, you have already seen an example, many examples of bounded sequences which are not convergent. Here it is, we are talking about functions, but we have seen bounded sequences that are not convergent. The, that uh, construction might give you some hope that there are bounded functions that are not continuous it is not a proof, it, it is just a hope, we are just uh, remembering what we have done in the previous sessions. There is a bounded sequence, there are bounded, enough bounded sequences which are not convergent. So, that suggests maybe it is true that uh, there is a, there are uh, bounded functions that are not continuous. So, so that part I will not even touch, I mean be, because, uh, yeah, because I leave it to, to check. Look for a bounded sequence, bounded functions that are not continuous. I will add some some in the lecture notes, but uh, before looking at lecture notes, you you try by yourself. The, you just copy paste whatever we have done for uh, sequences. The, the same uh, idea, you just uh, transfer it to the functions level. That's what, uh, yeah, that, that that is that's what I'm uh, asking for. Now now the question is, if I take a continuous function, do I know that it is bounded? Yeah, so, let, let us just try whatever we can do. So, let us take a continuous function f from u to r continuous, do I know whether it is bounded or not? We do not even know where to start. So, let us see some examples and uh, uh, let us uh, convince ourselves uh, whether it is uh, there is a slight possibility or there is absolutely no possibility. Okay, wh what kind of continuous functions do we, do we know? In the previous session, we have seen some examples very, very small, small examples, basic examples. What is it? Uh, one thing is uh, the, the constant function. Constant function is continuous. f of x is equal to 11 for every x belongs to u. This is a continuous function. What is the, uh, what is the image of this? It is singleton. Singleton is bounded subset of uh, r. So, we have a continuous function that is bounded. Fine. This does not say anything about all continuous functions. But this continuous function is bounded, fine. What other uh, continuous functions uh, do we know? Identity function, that is one example, right. Second, f of x is equal to x for every x belongs to u. What is the image of this? Just u. And do I know that uh, this is a bounded subset of R? I mean, what do I mean? I did not put any condition on u. So, there are unbounded subset of uh, r. So, if I take unbounded subset of uh, r as the domain, for that the image will be unbounded. So, suppose I take uh, u to be equal to r for u is equal to r, uh, this is unbounded subset of r. If I take it, if I take the continuous function f from r to r, x goes to x, the image of this function is equal to r it is unbounded, uh, even though you, if I study the continuous function, which is, which is very nice, the identity function is very nice, but 
this is not bounded function because as we said the, the image is equal to the, the, the domain. So, uh, so what do we do? Uh, one way to put some, uh, one way to get rid of this obstacle is, uh, is by asking maybe, maybe if I ask u to be bounded subset, suppose I restrict my attention to bounded subset of R as domain of function instead of taking from R to R, if I take a, if I take a map from say uh, 0 comma 1 bounded subset of R, 0 comma 1, the, the domain is 0 comma 1 again, the, the interval 0 comma 1. This uh, is, a, is a bounded subset of R, the image of this is this, it is, it is bounded. So, we are not very sure yet, but if I start with the bounded, bounded subset of R as the domain of a continuous function, f, f from u to R continuous and u R is bounded, there is some slight possibility that f of u is bounded. If I do not ask this condition, if I do not ask this condition, <laughs> we, we know we know we have some example where this is unbounded. So, so we put this condition, hoping, just hoping that we, we might be able to convince ourselves that uh, uh, f of u is bounded subset of R. Okay. Uh, so, so, so this example suggested that uh, it is a, it is a smart move to ask the domain is a bounded subset of. And for this, it, it worked already. Now, now what? Now, now we'll we'll see some other examples and then see whether we can uh, whether this is still whether this still holds or not. One one can one can take other examples of continuous functions. What what example we have seen? Uh, constant function that we mentioned here, identity function that I mentioned just now, uh, then polynomials. Uh, it's it's slightly difficult for me to compute the image of a, some polynomial. If if u is very large, I don't know how to do. It it takes some time, but uh, yeah. So so I I'll keep that aside. So polynomial functions I'm I'm keeping aside. It it takes some time. Uh, maybe we can prove it is bounded or unbounded. That is different. Uh, and, and and what else? Well, what other function do we have? All these functions we have produced by imitating the structure maps of R, addition. Multiplication, already inverse, multiplicate inverse. So if I, if I take a continuous function, if it is, uh, then I can talk about multiplicate inverse of that. If it is non-zero, if it is doesn't take value zero anywhere. So let us let us uh, see that kind of continuous function. Here we have already one example, f x is equal to x. This is the this is a continuous function. We can just take one by f of that. So so uh, one by f is a map from zero comma one to r x goes to 1 by x this is this is a continuous function one <laughs> one problem is suppose x is equal to 0 i should write here 1 by 0 i don't know what it means uh, because i don't know what it means uh, one one uh, smart move is to remove 0 from the domain of this function otherwise i don't know what this means if i don't know what it means how can i proceed further so I am removing the, the the zero element from the domain, and uh, and and we consider this function. This, this is continuous. We, uh, we know that if f is a continuous function, that is uh, that is nowhere zero, then one by f is continuous function. So this is continuous function. This is continuous function that is for sure. Now, is it bounded? That is a question that you want to ask. Is this continuous function turns out to be a bounded function or not? So, how do we proceed further? Uh, proceed from here. We are suppose it is bounded. What does it, it mean? The exist m belongs to R such that this one by x is a less than m for all x belongs to zero comma one. This is what this is what uh, it means to say 
that uh, this function x goes on by x is bounded. Now, now do we have do we have this result? That is that is a that that is a question that we want to ask. Now, now, now see this is one by x already positive, so we can actually remove this uh, this mod. And uh, this is the same thing as saying uh, one by m is uh, less than x. Right? I'm just I'm just pulling this here, pulling this here. So what it says is there is a m belongs to R such that for every x belongs to zero comma one, we have this property. Do we have that situation? That is a, that is a question. Now, uh, how do we check that? So, uh, let us take m to be equal to two. Uh, may maybe this is the this is the bound. We don't know, right? So, for this to be the bound, we want what? One by two to be x should be always greater than one by two whenever x belongs to zero comma one. Uh, but uh, we we know some of the some elements in <laughs> zero comma one. That are uh, less than one by two. What are those? Say one by three is less than one by two, right? The one by three is an element of zero comma one, right? One by three less than one because because three is greater than one. One by three is less than one. So the two doesn't seem to be a bound for that. Uh, okay, two is not bound. Maybe three is bound. So maybe three is is a bound for that. So what does this say? This says, for every x belongs to zero comma one, one by three is uh, less than x. For every x belongs to zero comma one. Now you know <laughs> what we are going to do. One can put here. So so we we put three here. We are looking for some element here that is less than that. You know what to do. Whatever element you take here. One can of course get some element in this, so that this is uh, not going to happen. So it it looks like it is unbounded. So maybe we will will uh, write down more clearly what what do we mean? What we mean is the following: for every m, for every m belongs to R, I am saying that existing x belongs to zero comma one, such that. Such that what? This is a uh, is not happening. X is less than one by m. This is this is what we are saying. Do do we have that situation? Given m belongs to R, can I think of an element in zero comma one such that x belong x is less than one by m? Consider the following. So, just like here, so, so, suppose m is a natural number. What we done is we simply added added some one to that. Then then we got we got the corresponding uh, x. So suppose m is a natural number. M is a natural number. Uh, then what we are doing is we are just adding uh, m plus one. So the element in R. Because m plus one is greater than one, one by m plus one is less than one. Right. So, so this element one by m plus one is an element of zero comma one. Now, what is the relation between one m plus one and m? M plus one is uh, greater than m. This implies one by m plus one is less than one by m. One by m plus one element of zero comma one, and one by m plus one is less than one by m. This is what we want. Right. Nice. So, so this says uh, one by x is unbounded. But see, we have mentioned only for the oh, oh, only when m is a natural number, right? Otherwise, how do we do? Convince yourself. Whatever I have done here, it doesn't have anything to do with m being natural number. Irrespective of that, one can of course add one to that. If m is positive, one can of course add one to that, and still maintain this. See, m is always positive. 
m is 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 of, is of course positive every time because 1 by x is is always positive for x belongs to 0 comma 1 so if there is any bound there is any bound for that that should be positive for positive m i am adding just one to that so the this this will still hold so this will also still hold so the natural number is only for uh, for the convenience but but this, this there is a, there is no role, role of uh, natural numbers here one can just add one to that and uh, still get this so so what did you observe here we have a continuous function 0 comma 1 to uh, r x goes to 1 by x we have a continuous function whose domain is bounded but the the function itself is unbounded so so this suggest maybe we need to make some other uh, extra assumptions on the function or on the domain or, or somewhere we need to make some change otherwise uh, other we, we don't have that that condition right continuous function uh, we want it to continuous function plus something should imply boundedness that's what we are trying to we may not be able to reach that that is different thing but we are, we are trying to that uh, to to reach that place continuous function plus something implies uh, boundedness continuous function plus domain being bounded gave some slight hope but this example says that is that is not really true even though the the domain is bounded even though the domain is bounded there are continuous functions whose uh, whose image is unbounded so okay, there are continuous functions whose uh, which are unbounded functions so so what do we do for this let let, uh, let us do the following suppose whatever we have done for uh, uh, the, the, the whatever we have done to check if continuous functions preserve bounded sequences let us go back and check that thing what did we do there right, right this was this was the situation right if we take continuous function if we take a bounded sequence and does it imply bounded sequence uh, then we said uh, because it is a bounded sequence there is a convergence subsequence we are we have called it as yn and we know it converges the boson is said it, it converges then if i want to apply the continuity i wanted the limit to be inside u otherwise i cannot i cannot do anything with that so further we added this condition that uh, u is a closed subset of r still we didn't reach uh, <laughs> anything so maybe we will try to apply this condition also there i mean when we when we don't know how to proceed further we we will apply uh, everything that is uh, uh, that is helping uh, to some slight extent this thing was helping us to to cross uh, this stage that if, if i have to if i have to put f here if i have to take the corresponding uh, image of the convergence sequence this should be an element of u so to cross that obstacle we this was useful that was not sufficient that we have uh, we don't know we, we have already seen here this was not sufficient but this was useful at this step maybe this will be useful for the for the other step also for the bounded uh, function part also so just by going with whatever we have done for bounded sequences we will try to add that condition also I mean, we will we lose nothing uh, we, we want to reach at a bounded uh, function uh, conclusion so we keep on adding some description for uh, for you so f from uh, u to r is continuous uh, this this example where is example uh, this example says it is better to ask u to be bounded so we will ask that u is uh, bounded and the previous description of uh, looking for continuous function preserving bounded sequences that suggested that u is closed so we will we'll ask we will put these two conditions so we will put these two conditions and, and then see whether we reach anywhere or not before we even try uh, with that let us just check first uh, if, if if this implies f is bounded 
which means what? Uh, see, the, this is this is bounded already. Uh, is this closed? If, if it is closed, uh, then this should not imply boundedness, right? If, if this is closed, uh, this should not imply boundedness. So, is it closed? Let me write, uh, let me check that first. Zero comma one subset of R is it closed? What does it, uh, it uh, what does closed means? If I take a sequence inside this and if I know it is convergent, the limit should be inside this. Can you think of some sequence inside 0, 1 that converges, that converges. This is, this is the, this is the first set of examples that we have seen. What is it? the sequence 1 by n converts to 0, 1 by n this whole sequence is contained in 0, 1 if you, because 1 because one is removed here you can start it uh, 1 by 2 it, it does not really matter. The, the sequence that started 1 by 2 also converts to 0, but the limit is not an element of this set. So, 0, 1 open 0 comma 1 is uh, not a closed subset of R. So, there seems to be some slight hope uh, that uh, this implies it is uh, bounded, but we will we'll see what we will we'll see what to do. N now, uh, okay. so we, we are we are trying to remove uh, one obstacle at a time and, and we got till here. We, uh, if we take any arbitrary function, arbitrary continuous function, if the domain is unbounded, we got an example whose uh, whose image is unbounded. Now, just this was not sufficient. Just asking for boundedness, bounded uh, domain is not sufficient, because we have this example where the domain is bounded, but the function is not uh, not bounded, even though it is continuous. So then we had to put some ex uh, some other extra exa uh, extra condition. Using the experience of uh, bounded sequence preserve, preserving uh, property, we thought maybe asking for this extra condition might be useful. We do not know for sure. This might be useful. So, we asked here and we also checked for this function, this is not closed. So, this gave us uh, uh, some extra hope <laughs> because if this is already closed and uh, this is unbounded, then maybe asking for uh, this closedness is, is, uh, is not a good idea, but we have seen see this is not closed and it is unbounded. So, there is some slight hope that uh, uh, f u is uh, bounded, bounded. Now, how do I prove that it is bounded? Whatever tricks that I have used previously that was not working. I took some sequence in, uh, in u that is bounded then we took the corresponding sequence, a corresponding image. Uh, we could not say anything about the boundedness of f x n. We could say something about a subsequence of that, uh, subsequence of that sequence f x n that is bounded. So, maybe if we are really, uh, if, if, if we are really looking at wrong direction, this should not imply it is bounded. But may, maybe this does not imply boundedness. What does it mean? f of u is a unbounded subset of R. What does it mean? Whatever element you give, there exists an element x in u such that f of x and m are related in some sense. Do we have this or do we have this? What, what is unboundedness? There is some element that uh, that cross m. Whatever m you give, there is an element in u that cross m. Uh, here I am assuming that f is positive, or you should put uh, this this mod. That's okay. I am assuming f is positive. Uh, yeah. Now this is this is the case. Uh, for every m positive, there is an element x belongs to u, such that f x is uh, greater than m. 
now, now uh, okay see <laughs> but i want to know what this this implies what this is what I, we, we are trying to see we have never used that f is continuous here it, we are assuming f is some function with this property so what the, the, i don't know how to proceed further we need to use that f is continuous that uh, u is bounded and u is closed then there may be some slight chance we get some some uh, uh, some some result from here some consequence of this so we want to use what we want to use continuity of f to use continuity of f we need what either the sequence version or the fundamental version to get sequence version we need to have a sequence inside u we need to have some sequence in u right so we are looking for some sequence in u see what we have here is an element of u so the, so it looks like we are going in a correct direction only given an, an element m belongs to u, uh, m positive we have some element in u such that fx is uh, greater than m maybe if i want to get a get a sequence a sequence in u is is uh, something indexed by natural numbers for each natural number you need to get an element in u for every m we have some element in u in particular for every n belongs to uh, n we will have some element xn in u such that fxn is greater than this is okay this will keep us keep aside we are looking for a sequence first we are looking for a sequence inside u that we got already we got a map uh from n to u that assign uh n to xn so we have got we got some sequence in u now now we want to apply f for that we want to apply continuity of f for uh, for, for this sequence but i cannot apply continuity for for arbitrary sequence i want it to be convergent i want it to be convergent and the limit is inside u do i have that i don't know anything about that uh, whether uh, about the possibility for xn for this whole sequence i don't know whether it is true or not whether it is convergent or not because there is no condition right if, if you see there are there is some element in u uh, it has something about the image uh, uh, of that element but it doesn't say anything about this element so but, but to observe uh, that uh, xn the sequence inside u and u is bounded we didn't use the boundedness here right so now we will use xn is a uh, sequence inside u and u is bounded subset of r so xn is a bounded sequence then <laughs> again bolzano vestas says xn has a convergent subsequence say yn yn is a convergent subsequence of the sequence xn we didn't use u is closed right what do you think we should do now use that use that u is closed we know yn converges to some element a that's what bolzano mr says a bounded sequence has a convergent subsequence this this is this is where you we use that u is bounded so that part is done what is remaining to u is use is that u is uh, closed we'll use it here yn is a sequence inside u it converts to some element because u is closed a is an element of u <laughs> nice so now we can apply the continuity of f for this we could not apply continuity for for the sequence xn but we can apply for this what do we get if we apply f of yn converts to f of n right so we got a sequence here for which we applied the continuity and we realized that uh, this is the case this is the situation now what what does this say this says fyn is convergent or it is bounded every convergence is bounded so fyn uh, is is bounded uh, again we are stuck at the same point right previously we said fxn is uh, fxn is unbounded fxn we don't know anything about that 
uh, f x n uh, was the image of the, was the image of the sequence x n. Then we got a subsequence y n uh, of x n such that f of y n was bounded even for the even before also f of y n is uh, bounded where when we are talking about uh, the uh, looking for the image of bounded sequences. Let me show that here we got a bounded subsequence of f x n. Then we have seen there may be sequences that are unbounded for which there is a subsequence that is bounded. So, we cannot confirm anything about anything from that. Okay. So, f y n is a bounded subsequence of f x n, but we cannot say anything about uh, f x n from that, that is the whole point. So, here also f y n is bounded, but we could not say anything about f x n. We could not say whether it is a, whether there is any, uh, anything specific for that or not. But observe that there is already some property given here, right? For f x n, we have this property already. We have we have this property. We will use the property. Let me write down that we have f of x n is greater than n for every n belongs to n, and what I have is f y n is bounded. How can I relate this with this? Let me do again the subsequence part. We have already done that before. I am doing again now. Let me denote the sequence x n by x and then the subsequence uh, y n by y. x composed with some map is y. That is what a subsequence, right? There, there is a map from n to n such that x composed r is y. In particular, x of r of n is equal to y of n for every n belongs to n. Now, r is not an arbitrary map, r is a map that preserves the order in the sense if m is less than n, we should have r m is less than r n or if you take uh, 1 is less than 2, r of 1 should be less than r of 2. Suppose, just suppose that I ask r 1 to be say 2, I mean initial, initial point I can do anything, right. It turns out that the, for the next element, I cannot take, uh, it, it, I, I cannot take it to be 2 again. This should be more than 2 or if, if I take here 3, r of 2 should be greater than this. In particular, r of n will always be greater than n. So, we have this condition. Now, it is about f of uh, the, the sequence, right? not the sequence. So, we apply f uh, here. What do we get? f of x of r n is equal to f of y n. Now, as I said here, f x n is greater than n. So, f of, f of x of r n will be greater than r n, right? That is what it, it, uh, we have mentioned here. f of x n is greater than n. If I put in, the, in place of if we put r n, it will be greater than r n. So, f of x of r n will always be greater than r n. As I said here just now, r n is greater than n. So, again we have this. This says what? f of y n is always greater than n for every n belongs to n. Do we have any issue with this? Do we have any problem? If, if this is the case, of course there is a problem. What is the problem? f y n is a bounded sequence. This says f y n is unbounded sequence. So, so there, there seems to be some uh, some contradiction in the assumption that we have made. So, because this says f y n is unbounded, but this says f y n is bounded. 
So at some place we have made some mistake. What is the mistake? The mistake is we ask that f u n f u is uh, unbounded. So this is the place that, uh, where we got we, we made the assumption, and it turns out that this is this is actually wrong. So f u is uh, bounded. So what does this say? If I if I take a function whose uh, domain is closed and bounded, then the function is a bounded function. I, I, I have I have said at least three four times here already. We have used both properties of uh, closed and boundedness of the domain. Only then we are able to conclude that the 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 image F U is a bounded subset of R. So let me write let me note that down. So continuity, so uh, continuous map from U to R with the U being closed and bounded. implies f is a bounded function so so this result this result whatever i have written here uh, goes by the name of this stuff here some some theorem some name N now what to do we have we have done something about uh, bounded sequence preserving we, we were trying to look for function that preserve bounded sequences uh, but then we realized that we are not able to proceed anywhere so we we changed our idea and asked that uh, okay uh, we will take function that are bounded functions then we said uh, that uh, we have already mentioned about continuous functions before we have to relate how how does how how these two are related is every continuous function a bounded function so uh, We, we we there were some obstacles, so we got it off one by one, and we uh, now we reached that if if you, the domain is closed and bounded, the function is a bounded function. This is where we reached. There will be other uh, uh, results, similar results, but but uh, this is this is what I think I think this is what I will I will do for for this course. Maybe I'll add some one or two in the in the lecture notes. Uh, but this should be sufficient this should be sufficient to really understand uh, uh, how things are uh, going on N now again we'll go back to the uh, uh, previous discussion we we talked about functions that preserve convergence sequences here we talked about functions that preserve bounded sequences there are two two more things that are remaining one is monotone uh, sequence one is uh, cauchy sequences see <laughs> this experience of looking for uh, the function that preserve bounded sequences it suggested maybe it is better idea to uh, to to ask the condition that the function doesn't uh, function in not function uh, preserving monotone sequences may not be really uh, a good idea what we'll ask is the function itself is a monotone sequence instead of asking f to preserve monotone sequences we will ask that this f itself is a monotone sequence what is it whatever you have done for bounded bounded functions we will do the same thing here also one can talk about uh, the, the 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 image of f and uh, just ask that uh, uh, if if x and y are two elements in the domain f of x and f of y should be related somehow the this uh, the definition is the following so f f is said to be strictly increasing if for every x comma uh, y uh, with this property inside the domain of f we should have f of x should be less than f of y this this we are calling as strictly increasing if f of x is a greater than f of y for every x, uh, x less than y then we say this is strictly decreasing if a function satisfy either this property or this property then we call f to be monotone function right so uh, again the same question that we need to ask for bounded functions we have asked the question what is it if i take a bounded function is it a continuous function if i take a continuous function is it a bounded function uh, uh, then i said uh, 
uh, we, we have some examples of uh, bounded sequences that, that are not convergent. So, if you are uh, just trying to mirror the same thing, maybe it is possible to get a bounded function that is not continuous using the same idea. But for continuous to bounded, uh, see it, it was it was true in the case of sequences, convergent sequences was was bounded. So we didn't lose hope. We tried uh, we keep on trying uh, uh, to see if continuous function implies bounded function. Maybe we we added we need to add some extra condition on the domain. But but at last we have reached uh, where we want to reach because th that was true for the sequences case. Convergent sequences was bounded sequences every time. Every convergent sequence is a bounded sequence. Continuous functions are uh, somehow related to convergent sequences. Bounded functions are rel related to bounded sequences somehow. So if, if the left hand side inclusion is true, we wanted the right hand side is, is also be true. It was it was not true always, but uh, we, we made some small small changes at, at some places and we reached the stage where continuous plus some extra condition on the domain in place bounded. We do the same thing for monotone, monotone functions. Monotone implies continuity. Is 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 it true? Does every monotone sequence monotone function turn out to be a continuous function? Or uh, every continuous function turn out to be monotone function? Some some something. We will ask two questions. Uh, maybe I. I Maybe uh, I will answer one question. You will answer one question. Look at uh, things where monotone implies continuity. Continuity implies monotone. So we'll do one. I'll do one. You do one. Uh, I I'll I'll think about this problem. You think about this problem. Anyways, I'll in the in the low notes I'll add about this also, but only for the video. I I will do this. Okay. Uh, so now now we are looking at the, the this question. Continuous. Implies monotonous. Again, uh, how do I proceed with this? Same idea we used for uh, continuous implies bounded. We took some examples of continuous functions, and then we see whether it is bounded or not. That is that is the only thing that we have done. Here, same thing that we will do. <laughs> Take a continuous function u to r. Look if it is monotone or not. The same examples. Take the identity function. X goes to x. If x is less than y, then the image is what? If a image of x is just x itself, image of y is y itself. So this condition is is satisfied. So for identity function, which is one example of continuous function, that is monotone. Very nice. At least something is true, right? Now, now we will do. Uh, we will look for other examples also, whether it is uh, whether it is the case or not. What other example do we know? The next thing after doing. Uh, constant function and the and, and the uh, identity function the, the next thing is to look for polynomials let us let us keep the let us keep ourselves at, at low and uh, let us ask a two degree degree polynomial uh, or uh, x goes to x square x goes to x square so we will fix some uh, so some interval here so because we are looking at at x square x can be negative also but this is still positive so we will take the interval say minus 2 and 2. This is a continuous function. The only thing is whether it is a, whether it is a monotone or not. Okay. So where does minus 1 map to? Where does 1 map to? Even though minus 1 is a less than 1, see this is the case. Minus 1 less than 1 should imply f of minus 1 is less than f of 1. But here we have an equality. This is definitely not an increasing function. Convince yourself that this is not a decreasing function also. That if I take if I take two elements with uh, let me do that. So let, let us take what? Uh, minus 2 is less than minus 1. What is f of minus 2? 4. f of minus 1 is 1. 4 is greater than 1. So, this fellow uh, on minus 2, 2 is not increasing, not decreasing. So, this is not monotone. We, sh we should feel happy and sad both because we got a function that is not monotone, 
we got a kernel function that is not monotone. So that means what we'll get to see how to fix the starting point, so that we might we might go to the monotonous uh, after some some years at least. <laughs> so something is something is, a, is, is an issue in case of bounded function. The issue was with the with the with the domain. So here there seems to be some problem. What is the problem? Uh, this thing I have already written the problem here. This is such that this f is not one to one. The, that the, that is one observation that we can make here. Because of that reason, uh, it, it is it is not uh, increasing or decreasing. So how do we how do we get rid of uh, that situation? Instead of asking for anything in the bound, let us ask that f is doesn't satisfy this property at least. If it's not one to one. So now uh, let me write down the, uh, what we are trying to do. Continuity uh, implies monotone. Now we ask that continuity plus one one is. This might be true, may not be true. We don't know anything yet. But if I ask this extra condition, uh, then we should not feel sad about this because this is not one one. This is not monotone, even though it is continuous. So it, it should be fine for us. So we got rid of uh, that example by asking it is one one. Now now what do we do? Continuity plus one one does it imply monotonous or not? So so what is monotonicity? Suppose I take a function f from u to r. Suppose we have two elements x and y in U with uh, with x less than y, then we should have f of x is uh, less than f of y, or f of x is greater than f of y. Right, right, this is what uh, this is what uh, uh, monotonicity means. N now, how do I how do I check that uh, given two elements with this property? Do, does it satisfy this condition or not? We don't even know how to proceed further. So, so, so we take help of a so some third point. There for two elements, one of this will be true a, a, every time. So, so we don't even know how to proceed further. So, we took some help of some third element, and then see whether we get somewhere from there on. So, this is fine. X less than y. So, so let us take uh, elements x and y in U. With uh, with this property, For, forget about uh, monotonicity. One of them will be true, right? So f of x. Let us assume this is true. I'm not saying this is true for every every x and y. I'm saying there are two elements x and y in U such that f of x is less than f of y. Now, as I said, we are, we are we are trying to make use of a third element. As a reference point, and then see how the how does it behave. Suppose C is an element in x comma y. C is an element in x comma y. Let us see whether we have uh, f x less than f c less than f y. This is what uh, if if C lies here, we want we are looking for. F of C to be between these two. We will just see whether it is true or not. Suppose F of C is less than F of X. Suppose uh, F of C doesn't satisfy this property, then we should have two. There are two options. One thing is this is actually here to the left side of F of X. That's what I've written here. Or uh, this should live on the right side of f of y or f of y is less than f of c so so there are two options now what this is x this is y this is c uh, we already mentioned that fx is less than fy and fc is less than fx so this is this is what uh, this is fc this is f x. This is f y. Now, now, f x is an element strictly between f c and f y. 
C is less than y, f c is less than f y. So, for any element in between these two, there is an element here that maps to the chosen element. So, in particular for, for f x, there will be some d such that f of d is equal to f of x. What is the problem here? Problem is we, we ask that f is 1 to 1. There are two elements x and d inside the domain which map to the same element. So, that is the problem. So, this cannot happen. This can happen, we do not know anything about that. So, let us try that also. So, the same thing uh, we, we have what? We have x, y, see here, and uh, f x, f y. We said f, f y is less than x, uh, f c. So, f c is somewhere here. Now, whatever we have done for f x here, we can do the same thing for f y. f y is an element between f x and f c, x less than c, f x less than f c, we have some element here, there should be some element here because of continuity. So, there should be some element d between x and c such that f of d is equal to f of so, what do we have? There are two elements inside the domain of f. They, they are different, right? Of course, they are different uh, because suppose d, d is somewhere here. Maybe there is a possibility that d is equal to y, but here uh, c is some element in between that and the d lies to the left side of c, y lies to the right side of c. So, these are really different, but their images are same. So, this contradicts that uh, f is 1 to 1. So, this is also not happening. We said this is not happening. We are now saying this is all not happening. So, only possibility is if C is an element in x, y, we should have this condition. Uh, for uh, if I have x and y with this property and if I assume f x is less than f y, then for any C between x and y, we should have this condition. So, now what we know is that uh, if that there are two elements x and y with, uh, with this property and f x is less than f y. Further thing we know that if, if, if there is a some element c in, is between x and y then f of c should lie here. So, from here we want to see whether, uh, whether, whether the function is monodon or not. So, what we do is we will fix some reference points. So, we will fix that uh, there are a and b in the domain with a less than b and f a is less than f b. I have written here x and y, but, but here I am fixing a and b as a reference point. So, we are assuming this situation for a and b with this we have this condition. We can assume a, f of a greater than f of b also, there we, we need to uh, try in a different method. So, here I am assuming that for a and b in u, for a fixed a and b with this and this property, that is all I am assuming. Uh, see, th this is not necessarily true uh, for any arbitrary a and b. I am only saying there are two elements a and b in u with a less than b and this. Then I am trying to see whether it is a, whether the continuity is, uh, whether the continuity implies monotonicity or not. So, now further one, what we need to do is, uh, I have to pick two random elements x and y in u with this. So, this is random, uh, but this is fixed, observe the difference. x and y are random elements in u with this property, we are trying to see whether f x is uh, less than f y, this is what we are trying to see. Now, we have this as reference points a and b as reference points, what we have is f a is less than f b. Suppose x lie here. Suppose a is uh, less than x, less than b. The previous discussion says f of a less than f of x, less than f of b. Suppose we have the situation that x is, is an element here, x lies x, x less than a, then we have x less than 
a less than b we have this condition f of a is uh, less than f of b now the question is where does fx live do we have this condition or do we have this condition there are two options right either this can be true or this can be true fa is less than fb fx can lay uh, uh, can lie to the left side of fa or in the middle or maybe in the right side suppose this is the case so for a and b the corresponding thing is fa and fb for there is some element between fa and fb that we are calling as x fx 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 lies here so again by uh, continuity intermediate value theorem there is some element here such that f of z is f of x this contradicts that uh, uh, f is 1 to 1 so we don't have this condition this is this is this is gone it can happen uh, that fx is actually uh, greater than fb it is possible what we have is this fa less than fb less than x uh, fx see for this situation there are only three possibilities either fx uh, lies uh, to the left side of fa or to the right side of fb or in between we have said this is not possible that is because of the intermediate value theorem can this be possible f a less than f b less than f x so, so, so if i if i apply that f again here it means what there is an element see this is f x between a and x there should be some element whose, whose image so this means what there is some element uh, say z between x and a such that f of z is f of b again the same one to one suggests that this is this should, this is not the case this is also not the case uh, this is also not the case so whenever i know that uh, x is less than a this implies f of x is less than f of a now so let me write down that a and b are the reference points i am assuming that uh, x is here if that is the case then f of x is uh, less than f of a always now for y there are three possibilities either y can lie here or here or here because x is less than y there are only three possibilities here 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 suppose x less than y less than a i already know fx is less than f a so the previous discussion says the only possible the the f y should lie between f x and f a so so what do we have that f x is less than f y so so this is this is fine this is this is fine one part is fine suppose suppose y lies here x is less than a less than y for this uh, a less than y the same discussion that whatever we have made if, if x less, if x is less than a we have realized if x is less than f a if we have some element that is uh, uh, say y say, say y is greater than a the same discussion says f y should be greater than f a this i'll add in the notes anyways but i'll be just simply repeating whatever i said just now so if x is less than a then fx is less than f a if y is greater than a then f y is greater than y f a so if this is the case what do we have uh, f x is less than f a less than y you can simply ignore this and still have fx is less than f y so in this case also we have this case this is the case still we are uh, we are okay now y can lie here also so x is less than a less than b less than y see <laughs> we can simply ignore this and uh, and, and uh, reach at the previous stage x less than a less than y 
So again, that also says f x is less than f y. So in in all these cases, we conclude that f x is less than f y. Yeah, here, whenever x is less than y inside u, we have f x less than f y. I might have missed one or two, uh, uh, one or two special cases that I will add in the notes. But the idea is clear. You need to do the same thing. You need to do, uh, repeat the same idea again and again. Conclude that uh, x less than y implies f x less than f y. That says uh, f is an increasing function. So let me let me uh, refresh what I have said. Suppose there are two elements a and b in U with a less than b and f a less than f, f b. Then we have proved that f is a increasing function. Suppose there are two elements in U such that a less than b, but f is greater than f b. The same idea says f is a decreasing function. So continuity plus one one implies monotonicity. And that's all for uh, this session. In the next session, we'll see some, some other results about continuous functions.